airplane, electric airplane isn't necessary right now. Electric cars are important. We need Solar some energy is important. St stationary storage of energy is important. These things are much more important than creating electric supersonic VTOL. Also, uh, the planes naturally, you really want that gravitational energy density for an aircraft, um, and this is improving over time. So, you know, it's, it's important that we accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. That's why electric cars, it matters whether electric cars happen sooner or later. You know, we're, we're really playing a crazy game here with the atmosphere and the yeah. oceans. We're taking vast amounts of carbon from deep underground and putting this putting this in the, in the in the atmosphere. This is crazy. We should not do this. It's very dangerous. So we should we should we should accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. So, I mean, this, the bizarre thing is that obviously we're going to run out of oil in the long term. You know, we're gonna, there's only so much oil we can, we can mine and burn. It's tautological. We must have susta a sustainable energy transport and energy infrastructure in the long term. So we know that's the end point. We know that. So why run this crazy experiment where we take trillions of tons of carbon from underground and put it in the atmosphere and oceans? This is an insane experiment. It's the dumbest experiment in, in human history. Why are we doing this? It's crazy. Do you think this is a product of momentum that we started off doing this when it was just a few engines, a few hundred million gallons of fuel over the whole world, not that big of a deal, and then slowly but surely over a century it got out of control? And now it, it, it's not just our fuel, but it's also, the, I mean, it, it, fossil fuels are involved in so many different electronics, so many different items that people buy. It's just this constant desire for fossil fuels, constant need for oil, without yeah. consideration of the sustainability. You know, the, the things like oil, oil, coal, gas, it's the easy money. Right. See, it's the easy money. So, Have you heard about clean coal? <laughs> the president's uh, been tweeting about it. It's got to be real. Clean coal, all caps. Did you see? He used all caps. Clean coal. Um, well... <laughs> You know, it's very difficult to put that CO2 back in the ground. It doesn't like being in solid form. Have it takes you thought a lot about of something energy. like that? Like some sort of a filter? Giant building-sized filter sucks carbon out of the <laughs> atmosphere? No, Is that no, possible? No, no, it doesn't. It's not possible. No? No. No, no. no definitely so not. So we're fucked. No, we're not fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a quite a complex question. Right. You know, we're really just when we're to, the the more carbon we take out of the ground and add to the atmosphere, and, and and a lot of it gets permeated into the oceans, the more dangerous it is. Like I I don't think right now I think we're okay right now. We can probably even add some more, but the momentum towards sustainable energy is too slow. Like the there's a vast base of industry, vast transportation system like this there's, there's two and a half billion cars and trucks in the world so and and, and the, the new car and truck production if it was a hundred percent electric that's only about a hundred million per year so it would take if you could snap your fingers and inst instantly turn all all cars and trucks electric it would still take 25 years to change the transport base to electric Makes sense because how long does a truck, a car, truck last before it goes into the junkyard and gets crushed? About twenty to twenty-five years. Is there a way to accelerate that process, like some sort of subsidies or some encouragement from the government financially? Well, the the thing that is going on right now is that there is a an inherent subsidy in any oil burning device, any any power plant or car, is fundamentally. Uh, consuming the carbon capacity of the oceans and atmosphere, or just say atmosphere for short. Um, so, like you can say, like okay, there's a certain probability of something bad happening past a certain carbon concentration in the, in the atmosphere. 
And so there's some uncertain number where if we put too much carbon in the atmosphere, things overheat, uh, oceans warm up, ice caps melt, ocean real estate becomes a lot less valuable, you know, <laughs> things underwater. And, and, but it's not clear what that number is, but it's definitely, you know, scientists would all, it's really quite, the scientific, scientific consensus is overwhelming. Um, overwhelming. I, I mean, I don't know any serious scientists, actually zero, literally zero, who, who don't think that, you know, that, that we were, have quite a serious climate risk that we're facing. And so there's fundamentally a subsidy occurring with every fossil fuel burning thing, power plants, pl aircraft, car, frankly, even rockets. I mean, rockets use up, you know, they burn, they burn fuel. But there's just, you know, with rockets, there's just no other way to, to get to orbit, unfortunately. So it's the only way. But with cars, there's definitely a better way with electric cars. And to generate the energy, do so with photovoltaics, because we've got a giant thermonuclear reactor in the sky called the sun. It's great. It sort of shows up every day. Very reliable. So if you can generate energy from solar panels, store it with batteries, you can have energy 24 hours a day. Um, and then you can, you know, can send it to, to the poles or near to, to the north uh, with, uh, you know, high voltage lines. Also, the nor north, northern parts of the, of the world tend to have a lot of hydropower as well. Um, but anyway, the, all, all fossil fuel powered things have an inherent subsidy, which is their consumption of the carbon capacity of the atmosphere and oceans. So people tend to think like, why, why should electric vehicles have a subsidy? But they're not taking into account that all fossil fuel burning vehicles fundamentally are subsidized by the cost, the environmental cost to Earth but nobody's paying for it. We are going to pay for it, obviously, in the future. We will pay for it. It's just not paid for now.